to Live at Kilburn. We are located at the Kilburn Mill right now in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and I just played, or tried to play, a song on a loaned piano from the New Bedford Symphony. Thank you for David Prentice for all the collaboration he and John Ippolito, our insider here at the mill, have done to facilitate some wonderful events already and yet to come. Many wonderful things on the horizon because of the Kilburn Mill. Music meets the arts here at Kilburn Mill. So I have a special treat for you tonight. We are bringing you here live. And this is a special person that I've only just begun to get to know in the last hour. What a treat to know this person. So I want to introduce you to the New Bedford Symphony's composer. No, he is the conductor of the New Bedford Symphony. And I'm sure he does a lot of composing as well. Please, Maestro Yanni Demur. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Did I say your name right? Almost. Okay, so Yaniv. Yaniv is good. Okay, and then Demure? D yes, that Dinur. was good. Did I say Demure before? Dinur, yeah. That's because of the jacket. It's very what? Demure. What's it's a good word. Demure. It's Demure. It's subtly beautiful. Oh. Yes. Well, there you go. Maybe I'll change my name. Yes, maybe you should. Maybe I will. I think you're already famous enough. You might want to just keep it. Maybe, maybe. But if I want to, to be become more demure. me, be more anonymous. anonymous. Sometimes I go on the street, you know, and, and people can't leave me alone, you know. Uh, it's yes. very... Yes, must be so hard. It's not easy. It must be so difficult. So, demure. Demure. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You know, I never claim to be perfect. I have a lot of dyslexia in my family. <laughs> oh. That's fine. It's okay. Yeah. It comes out in creative ways. So I tell you, you know what I've been thinking, um, just listening to your music the last couple of days, listening to some of your interviews, and seeing that you have this incredible, encompassing heart and mind for music that started when you were a little boy in Israel, in Jerusalem. And you called your mother a musicologist. Is that a real thing? A musicologist? Yeah, yeah. She studied musicology in the university, um, but later she worked at the uh, Music Academy in Jerusalem as the PR person. Uh, and uh, my aunt was my first piano teacher, so I was kind of surrounded uh, with music uh, since I was born. Mm -hmm. And so that osmosis that you obtained that by your environment, you would recommend that because I know that you're heavily into music education for the youth. And, you know, we were talking to some other entertainers that we've had in here, and our firm belief, too, is that if you start children young in the arts, it, it can actually change their brain patterns and help them learn languages better. It can help them to process information better. And it's just a it's just a great thing to give your to give your child and, and which I understand your two year old is already beginning to play the piano. Yes, like I told you before, uh, she has her whole future planned out. <laughs> you know? Oh sure. No, I mean uh, uh, you said what you said is true. I think it, it's very important uh, for children to be exposed to beauty and uh, to music. Uh, to art in general, but since we're doing, we're talking about music, because, um, like you said, there's so much that could be gained from music. Music can teach us so much. It can teach us listening. Can teach us accepting the other, accepting some something that is or someone that is different from you. Uh, when you listen to different instruments, you know, uh, when you when you. Um, uh, when you work with the orchestra, if everybody plays so loud all the time, you can't hear anything. It's all about balance, you know. So, uh, yeah. So um, my my uh, two-year-old daughter Jojo, uh, she loves playing the piano. She wants to play the piano every day now. And uh, if so, so I take her to, to the piano room and, and at some point I tell her, okay, Jojo, let's go upstairs and big meltdown. <laughs> no all done piano, no all done piano, <laughs> she, she tells me. Uh, and, and, you, and 
that's that's already enough for me. I don't I don't want her to be. I don't need that she will be a musician. You know, uh, I don't have. She doesn't have to be a musician. Right. But as long as she's she likes music, she's exposed to it. I think that's a great thing. Isn't that what it's all about? I mean, when you like it, when you love it, and you're bending in that direction, just keep going as far as it'll take you. Everybody has their own skill set that they can get to a certain level. Um, and I think it's all how you apply yourself. I'm sure you would know. You know, the thing that amazes me about the orchestra is, you know, if you really listen when you're there, the symphony, the orchestra, all the different types of music, but in that particular way, when you have that many people playing together with different personalities, with different tastes, even though they're playing the same notes, you can tell if somebody came to the piano and played for Elise, and then the next person came and played for Elise, that would sound completely different. And maybe not completely, but maybe the timing would be different, or the emphasis on the, the um, you know, how hard they're pushing, or how lightly they're playing with their fingers. I mean, and that just right there is their signature. How do you pull 70 plus people on a variety of instruments into a place of I don't want to say submission, but I would have to say, um, you know, they all have to stay in time, but how do you, I, the, the job of the composer is to make that piece sound unique to that orchestra, correct? And how do you do that? I think the, the aim for me, uh, when I work with the orchestra is, uh, like you said, there are 60, 70 different opinions at the same time. And, and the role is to um, not to, to uh, come to a submission, but collaboration. That's a better word. <laughs> word that we're looking for. And I think we, and I aim that at the end of the day, we will all think the same about the piece, about the piece of music um, that we want to perform. Uh, how do you do it? That's the that's the hard question. That's the yeah yeah. How do Is you it do discussion? It? Um, some orchestras do it, uh, like uh, the Orpheus Orchestra uh, in New York. Uh, it's a chamber orchestra that plays without a conductor, and it's like a democracy, you know. And everybody has their own opinion, and they discuss it in rehearsal. And if they don't uh, agree, they vote. You know, so they have their, their own thing, but most orchestras uh, don't don't do that. They, that's why there's a conductor. There's one person who is the leader, and um, he or she decides where we're going with this. Uh, sometimes there's there could be a discussion. You know, it's not like the old days, like oh, you do this and if not, I will. You know, uh, but you have to come up with a way to to make the players give their best, uh, make them want to play the best they can for you. Yeah, and to me, when I think about music, I think about ballet. To me, those two things remind me of the perfection of synchronicity, which is beyond me. I'm, that's why I don't play an instrument in a band, because I just, uh, my head goes over here, and it's just free flowing. But when I've ever tried to play, say, keyboards in a band, it's very difficult because I'm now thinking about what everybody else is doing. I'm listening, I'm waiting my turn, and I'm making sure I'm synced up. And it's almost, I mean, that's why I didn't spend the time on it. It's overwhelming to me. That's a huge thing to do. And yet, this is what people do. And that's why, you know, when you're saying, you te this teaches people how to get along, how to listen to others, I mean, think about the skill set right. that you know that goes into all the rest of your life just from music. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, music really teaches us about life. Yeah, about um, uh, life skills, about how to live sometimes. Uh, but but you know, most of all, music uh, music touches us. Music makes us. I feel makes us go through an experience, uh, an emotional experience that hopefully we are different people after we listen to to music. That's our goal when we we play concerts for for audiences. So now you had mentioned um, in one of your interviews that 
you love to play the piano and you can play all day and it's a passion of yours, but you get lonely because you miss the rest of the story, the rest of the players. So you really are all about collaboration and that's probably what brought you to being a conductor. Um, it's true, I mean, I love playing the piano. That's my first love, you can say. Um, and it's also um, the, the difference between um, conducting and playing the piano is obviously that when you play the piano, you actually have a physical contact with the sound because people sometimes forget but conductors, they don't make a sound. The orchestra really makes the, the sound. The orchestra, the players play, the musicians. Um, so for me, it's very important to, to still uh, feel connected to the, the physical sound. But like you said, it, it, you're by yourself and it, it does get lonely, especially during this time, you know, that there are fewer concerts, hopefully not for, for long anymore, but, um, um, but uh, yeah, when, when you, to make music with a lot of people, it's just wonderful. It's a beautiful thing. I know that we had some of the wonderful players from the orchestra um, or the symphony, I'm not sure what component, but they came here to the Kilburn Mill and we had some um, music meets the arts with inside of the artist studios. They, they came and they played and, and what, we what we saw and what we heard was we were starving to play. Yes. We were starving for an audience. Yeah. And this pandemic has been so difficult on performers, especially those who rely on the sounds that others are making to complete the full sound. So I, I mean, we, I learned so much just from listening to them. And of course we know the rock and roll world a little bit and thank God for Zoom. And you can practice together with the Zoom calls, but there's nothing like being in person with a live audience, is there? Yes, um, and we've, the New Bedford Symphony, we've been, I think, very lucky because we actually, during this whole time, we kept uh, doing concerts. Um, and in fact, we were one of the only orchestras in the country that, that kept playing, and uh, that's, that's been really, really amazing. We couldn't do a full orchestra because of all the restrictions. Uh, we, in the beginning, we had uh, only, um, we could have only 25 people in the, on the, in the house. Uh, and we couldn't have audience, so we, we only streamed it online. Um, and we couldn't do wind instruments. We only, we've been only doing strings and percussion. So um, we had to be very creative uh, to come up with interesting programs, um, with repertoire that we don't usually play because we play for full orchestra. But I think, um, there's been there, there's been some good things about it about about doing this kind of repertoire that we're not used to do, but it doesn't it still doesn't replace the experience of of a live concert. I mean, people love some of the aspects of of a stream concert. They love the close-ups on the instruments. You know, they love looking at the the players, how they how they look when they play, you know, uh, and the instrument, and the fingers and everything. Um, but you know, it's not like being together uh, in, in the house and, and going through this experience together. It's, it's something that cannot be replaced. Absolutely not. Now, when are you planning on beginning your live performances um, with an audience? In the fall. In the fall. So hopefully when, when, in the, when we open the season in the fall, uh, we're hoping to have the entire orchestra back on stage uh, with, with audience. And uh, I can't wait for that. Fantastic. I know we'll be in the, we'll definitely be in the audience for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I know you had mentioned before that you're going to be trying to do something in New Bedford outside during the summer. Right. Which would be fabulous. Yes. We're Complicated to get together, but so we should all keep our eye out for the New Bedford uh, Symphony webpage to find out when that's coming. Yes. I hope that will happen. Uh, obviously, it involves a lot of uh, different aspects. Um, finding a place, building a stage, bringing the, the whole orchestra back, all the what 
the restrictions are, uh, what will be in the summer and all of that. Um, but we're looking, we're looking into it and we definitely want to do it. That's fantastic. So now, I know New Bedford's thrilled that you're here, that you are a very entertaining uh, composer. That's why people stop you on the street and you, can't, you have to change your name to Demure. That's right. Yeah, but um, other than that, um, you've played, your, your first concert that you, the first time that you uh, were a conductor was in Ireland at 19. That's right, when I was 19 years old. How on earth? Were you able to accomplish that level by 19? It, it was very, uh, uh, it was a very random sequence of events. I actually read a book uh, by an Irish uh, author, Niall Williams. It's called um, Four Letters of Love. And it's a, a really beautiful book. Um, I don't remember much from it. Uh, it was so many years ago. <laughs> But uh, I, it was full of, of descriptions of Ireland and, and you could really, so I said, I have to go to Ireland. So I was looking for an, an excuse to go to Ireland and I found this um, conducting class, conduct, summer, summer class in conducting in Dublin. And, uh, at the end, and, and I went and at the end of the class we conducted, there were a few participants, we conducted the National Symphony Orchestra of Ireland and after that, uh, they, they liked me, so they invited me to come back a couple more times and do concerts with them. So um, uh, that, that was really, you know, it kind of happened by accident. But then I wrote, I wrote the author, I got his email and I wrote him about this whole story and, and I said, you know, uh, I would love to meet you if you're around. And, and, and he, he wrote me back and he said that unfortunately he would be in Italy at the same time that I'm, that I'm there, but he's very happy for me that Ireland was successful for me. And he said, there are no coincidences, you know? So right. <laughs> Didn't you do some conducting in Italy too? Yes. That's, and, and, and of course you went back and you were the youngest conductor in Israel. Yes, uh, at the time, I, I don't know, if maybe somebody beat me by now. I don't know, I haven't heard. But, yeah, yeah, I was very young when, when I started. It's, it's pretty young. Now, now there are more, more and more young um, conductors um, that are beginning, but, but at the time it was pretty young to, to, to stand in front of a professional orchestra at 19 years old and tell them what to do. Yeah, I was, I mean, as we say in Hebrew, chutzpah, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to have a lot of confidence, and I think that's, you could only be a conductor if you had complete confidence, because some of the great people that you've worked with, some of the amazing um, musicians who are very powerful in their own right and very confident in their own right, for you to lead them and for them to allow you to lead them at such a young age is remarkable and says a lot about you. Maybe, maybe overconfident. You know, later, later you learn other lessons that, uh, you know, maybe I was too um, uh, cocky or something like that. And, and you, learn, you learn these things because um, it's good, it's, it's... Of course, when you stand in front of the orchestra, you have to have confidence. Otherwise, uh, I mean, they have to trust you to give their best and to, for you to lead them to do a good concert. So you have to have confidence, but, but uh, you also question yourself a lot. Uh, it's inevitable. You ask, is it, is it right inside of your head? Is it really right what I'm doing? I mean, maybe it shouldn't be like that. Maybe it should. Did the composer really mean that? Maybe I'm doing complete nonsense, you know. But once you stand there in front of the orchestra, that's it. You have to be sure, you know, because if you are not, they, they are very sensitive. They will pick it up immediately and it will all fall apart. That's incredible. I mean, so it's so much going on in your mind that you're trying to communicate to me that is, is it's, it's a wonder to me. I don't know how you do it, but you did say you were once told to, it's not just about the first note in the beginning. You have to hear the last note before you even begin. How do you do that? Um, that's a, 
that's kind of a par paradox, right? It's kind of you have it's kind of you like you you have to live in several dimensions at the same time. You have you have to live in the moment, of course, but you also have to think about the future, and you have to think about the past, where you just came from and where you want to go. Um, so uh, it's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting state of mind to be in, and there is so much information that is go, going on going through your head um, when you when you conduct that um, after a rehearsal or or a concert, you know, I f you feel you can feel totally drained because of that, and then it's good to watch something on TV that you don't need to think about or something, you know. Relax, to relax the, your mind. Turn off the, the brain mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. recover. But it's amazing that you, you think about how deep your narrow pathways are. <laughs> I don't know if you, I, I like to talk about the brain, not that I'm yeah. somebody, but I just know that, you know, when you concentrate and concentrate and concentrate, you're building these, you know, pathways like a root system of a tree and the branches of a tree getting, you know, more and more. And that's why you probably get exhausted and need to just go over and relax a little bit. Right. But it's, um, thank God that some people can have that ability to do that. I don't think everybody can do that. It's an ability to concentrate and to stay in attention throughout without like your mind want, does your mind, has your mind ever wandered in the middle of, uh, you know, here we are, everyone's playing, and I just, my mind just went bleep, and I don't know where I am. Has that ever happened to sure, you? Sure, sure, it, it can happen. We're all human, you know. Um, it, it can happen, and, and then you you catch yourself and you say, oh my God, what am I doing? No, I have to, I have to go. Do you panic? Because panic makes it worse, right? Right. But that's uh, why you have the paper right in front of you, right? For the most part? Yeah. So Although you can I get right back onto it. Right. Although I do like to, if I can, to, to conduct without the without the music, then I'm more in the music and with the players, right. and and if I know the the music well, I I would much prefer to to do that. Yeah. Oh, I would I would imagine just like we're having a conversation right now without any notes, we have no right. idea where we're going. <laughs> no. Although we 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 rehearsed everything. Uh, yeah. Everything that we're saying is is uh, is written out. We rehearsed all of this. Everything has already been done in our, you know, our thoughts have already been formulated, right? Right, right. So, have you ever looked around at your instrumentalists and seen like a moment where they're looking at you for help or um, where you see that they're in the zone? Do you, have you ever had one of those concerts where everybody at the same time is in it and right. it feels like magic? Yes. What was your favorite one? Um, you know, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't happen very often that really, really everything clicks. There's always something that happens, it's a little things, you know, that, that you know, um, most, m I, I think most, uh, most of the audience doesn't, doesn't uh, catch on, you know, there are small details or something like that, uh, that maybe only you and the musicians know that it happened but in rare so but there are some rare cases where there's a performance that that you feel things just click you know and you feel kind of that you don't need to conduct anymore it just goes it has a life of its own you know and and um these are the really the, the best moments wow. that's you know some people would I, would say that's like channeling the greats right through you. Like everything that's already been is coming right back, right through you. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe yeah. that's what it is, yeah. Well, I, I just know that um, I would encourage anyone to come and hear your symphony orchestra because I, I think especially for young children to be exposed to it before they're listening to everything else that they can hear. You know, rock, nothing wrong with rock and roll. I mean, we all love it. I think you said your fa one of your favorite bands is an Israeli um, rock and roll band. Right. Yeah, so, um, which is, I, I'm dying to hear that now. But I think to be exposed to multiple types of music, you know, then you choose which path, if you want to go into path of music, is a great thing to do. But also, also for um, adult children, 
Oh, yes. Not, also, not only young children, but adult children mm -hmm. also are welcome to, to the symphony. Because this is a really, a really special group, uh, the New Bedford Symphony. Um, very unassuming, you know. They just want to play great music and do it well. Uh, some of our players uh, sometimes sub with the Boston Symphony. So they're really good, you know, and we're having a lot of fun. That's, that's fantastic. Well, yes, I won't leave out the adult children. I think everybody needs to experience it. There's so much communications, TVs are on all the time, and people are getting numb. And this is really good for the brain to go listen to your life and music. And for the soul. And for the soul, for the heart and soul of man and woman. Yes, I wanted to ask you about this picture because it's so beautiful. Well, that is a painting that I did. It's called Alzheimer's. But you, you painted. I painted this painting, um, and John Ippolito put it over there. He tends to put art up when we have a conversation. Um, so my mom recently passed away of Alzheimer's, and um, it was about a year and a half, of, well, probably a year before the pandemic, when um, she came to see me with my father. And when they left, um, you know, she didn't know who I was, and I saw how difficult that was, and my dad's like the biggest hero I've ever met in my life. I've never seen a more dedicated man in my life. Um, my mom um, was a very creative person, and um, but then, you know, Alzheimer's takes you piece by piece. And um, they don't, you know, when they don't know who you are anymore, and it's just, you know, as you see the product, the, how it takes them away. So I didn't even go to do that. I just went, I do something called intuitive painting, mostly. Um, I've processed most of my negative emotions or painful situations in my life through art. And, um, and usually I go to a canvas and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just start painting, I turn on music, and I start painting. This painting, I think I turned it around a few times and then before I knew it, I started to you know, carve out uh, some, of the, some of it. And then I saw what it was and to me, um, it just happened, you know, kind of like, not that it's some great masterpiece, you know, it's not a major thing of beauty, but what it is is a, um, as you can see, at the end of the day, there's there's no thoughts connected anymore, and there's just a lot of jumbling going on in there, and that's why I named it Alzheimer's. Interesting. I see. To me, there's a lot of music in there. Interesting. You know, and this looks like music stuff. You know. The, oh yeah. See? I don't know if you meant that. No, I didn't mean that. But see, I like that you see that, and that's what I love about art is exactly. that you bring you and your interpretation is exactly what that's supposed to be. It speaks to me in a certain way. Right. It's like, it's like music. It's just like it's, music. It speaks differently to, to different people. Right, one person might, one person might um, you know, have a negative reaction, another a positive, you never know. But I've always found that art is not just about the person that created it, it's about the viewer. It's all about, it's visual. It doesn't make any sound, so whatever you read from that, is actually in there, isn't it, right? Exactly like music. I mean, if we play just for ourselves, what did we do? You know, we play for our audience. We play for, for all of us to, to come together and be together and go through something together. Absolutely, and I think the same thing with your visual artists and all types of performers, right. that they, there's a need to, um, to share your art, you know, and, and also a, a need to let go of um, you know, judging yourself and having no shame about your work and don't compare yourself with someone else. Just get where you want to go and keep moving in the right direction. And art and music will be something that brings a lot of healing. I agree. I yeah, agree. I hope so. Well, this has been absolutely wonderful having this conversation with you here. Same here. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, we're, you're, you're so welcome. So the Kilburn Mill here in uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts, is neighbor to the New Bedford Symphony. And so we will be partnering again in the future for some amazing events. And when we are doing live music, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar that we're gonna collaborate. So, cause we found one of our favorite new collaborators. Oh, sounds good. We had so much fun when we were here with the, with the entire symphony, when we did Symphony on Tap. Oh my goodness. We have to do it again. I was gonna say, it sounds like it needs a repeat performance. Yes, Okay. Definitely. Well, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us here. Remember, kilburnmill.com, and if you wanna get in touch with us, give us a call. Bye-bye.